Hi folks, Raspberry Pi never stops to surprises. I've just got this Raspberry Pi 5 with 16GB of RAM, which is truly amazing. Despite many Raspberry Pi 5 enthusiasts being convinced that there would have never been a new version with a larger memory and some very enthusiastic failed attempts to replace the memory chip with 16GB version on the original Raspberry Pi 5, now we have the first Raspberry Pi with 16GB of RAM and it's certainly not the last. It shares the same system on chip with Raspberry Pi 5 Compute Module and Raspberry Pi 500. The new system on chip has a greater performance, but it's not fully backwards compatible with the previous version on the first Raspberry Pi 5. In the first part of the video, we're going to discuss the basic differences between Raspberry Pis with an old and Raspberry Pis with a new system on chip. They are both designated 2712, but there is a letter C within the old system on chip marking and letter D on the new system on chip. Though this is hard to spot, it means quite a large difference in functionalities and performance. In the second part of the video, we're going to discuss benchmark test results, which are very interesting, provided that I was able to test the original Raspberry Pi 5 against Raspberry Pi 5 with a new chipset and also Raspberry Pi 500 and Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5. If you are about to install Windows 11 on any kind of Raspberry Pi with the new system on chip, it won't work. Neither on Raspberry Pi 5 nor Raspberry Pi 500 nor Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5. It only works on the old Raspberry Pi 5 with the old system on chip. This is due to an old version of UEFI BIOS 0.3 from the March last year. It seems that the development have stopped at that time and no new versions were produced. If you are using Android, you have an option to install the latest Constacank Android 15, which runs perfectly, but it's uh, probably a little bit hard to install if you want to have Google Play Store as well. The installation is similar to Android 14 installation, but there are a few tricks, which we are going to discuss in a separate video. Newer versions of Raspberry Pi OS or Raspberry Pi 5 with reasonably new updates that include appropriate DTBO files in boot slash firmware directory work flawlessly. Also Debian based Kali Linux or Raspberry Pi 5 also seems to have no problems running on the new system on chip. Before discussing benchmark results, let me tell you how I done the tests. To maximally reduce the test bias, I've used the same SD card with a pre-installed Raspberry Pi OX Bookworm Edition and the same benchmarking tool, which I've compiled for multiple cores and single core. I deem single processor core tests to be more realistic, because there are no concurrent memory access requests by other cores, or at least there are very few. I've tested the original Raspberry Pi 5 with 8GB of RAM, the new Raspberry Pi 5 with 16GB of RAM and the new system on chip, and Raspberry Pi 500 with 8GB of RAM and Compute Module 5 with 4GB of RAM. The last two also have the new system on chip. The differences between the new Raspberry Pi 5, Raspberry Pi 500 and Raspberry Pi Compute Value 5 are just superficial. They have different kind of connectors and they may also lack some connection abilities. For example, Raspberry Pi Compute Model 5 lacks uh, USB 2.0 ports. But today's topic is a large memory and an enhanced memory controller within the new system and chip. The results of my measurements are promising. Memory bandwidth between the system and chip and memory chip is between 4 and 5 gigatransactions per second. The 32-bit wide memory bus allows for roughly the same performance as we can observe on other competitive single board computers like Rock Pi 5 and Orange Pi 5 Plus, which have two memory chips but only half as wide 16-bit memory buses to each of them. However, comparisons between the benchmarks show that Raspberry Pi 5 with the old system on chip has a slight advantage. The new system on chip is faster, therefore the only advantage of Rock Pi 5 and Orange Pi 5 Plus is a possibility of having an even larger memory with 32 GB composed of two 16 GB memory chips. A very interesting result is also comparison between single core memory access and multiple core memory access. I've tested single core performance and it turned out to be much quicker than multiple core performance. This is due to each core competing for the memory access. 
Each A76 processing core has a half a megabyte of layer 1 cache memory, which runs at the processor speed. Then there is a 2 megabyte layer 2 cache memory, which is common for all the processing cores. Main memory performance, therefore, can only be measured by measuring the length of operations on large memory arrays, which are much larger than 2 megabytes. I've used 800 megabytes arrays, which are clearly large enough to prevent processing cores making any use of their respective cache memories except for running the program code, but this is exactly what you want. You want to just to see what the memory throughput is by reading or writing or modifying the large data arrays. If all four cores are processing large arrays of data at the same time, the memory performance can drop as low as 15% of the memory performance with a single core. A tendency of smaller RAM chips being faster than the larger ones with the old system on chip still remains with the new one, but there are smaller differences. A 4 GB chip is on average 5% faster than 16 GB RAM chip. What about overclocking? The new system on chip seems to be less sensitive to overclocking. By overclocking Raspberry Pi 500 with 8 GB of RAM to 3 GHz, RAM access gets only about 2 to 5% slower compared to a factory default speed of 2.4 GHz. However, I was unable to overclock Raspberry Pi with 16 GB of RAM to 3.0 GHz. Instead, I was only able to run it at 2.8 GHz. I'm going to do some more tests with the Extreme Raspberry Pi infrastructure to see whether it is truly not possible to overclock it more than to 2.8 GHz even with a more powerful power supply. The Raspberry Pi 5 with the new system on chip started to boot on 3 GHz. It quickly became obvious that there were RAM errors. So I guess that the new memory controller would have not been able to properly refresh all 16 GB of RAM when running at a higher frequency. This is all folks for today. Stay tuned for the updates. If you've liked this video, please press like and subscribe buttons. And don't forget about the notification bell. See you in the next video. Bye.